So this is Paul Gregg. I've been working on a STEM course for uh, math, physics, and engineering for the past couple years, uh, which uses uh, backyard roller coasters to uh, discuss those subjects. And I'm just going to make a, a series of videos, maybe a half hour each is, is what I think. And uh, we'll see how this goes. Um, uh, many of you might know my background. I was a research and development engineer for structures uh, at Boeing for 34 years. And then when I retired, I uh, started working on backyard roller coasters, trying to improve them. I built four backyard roller coasters so far, all of them. Uh, enjoyed by my grandkids uh, and uh, this STEM course I've taught it once and uh, kind of been improving it as we go and uh, this is just to kind of document it so um, this is the outline it has to do with science and engineering I don't think uh, this is a course that you just take by itself to learn math and physics and engineering. I think it's a supplemental thing where we can uh, design and build a roller coaster and ride it maybe if uh, we get uh, if we build it well enough and have permission to do it from our school. And uh, and so it's kind of yeah you could teach it at a middle school level and have people get excited about math and physics and engineering but really you to, to really do the work you need to already have your uh, a decent background in in physics able to do algebra and uh, physics kind of the energy equations and and uh, centripetal acceleration and then a little little about aerodynamics and mechanical drag energy uh, uh, what's gravity and uh, laws of motions and things like that and then uh, the engineering process where we start with uh, you know a blank piece of paper write down our requirements and then identify where we're gonna have to work hard on it and and what the risk issues are and then uh, when we get a design that we're happy with uh, how to build it which is involves a lot of motor skills you know and uh, skills in a shop uh, I generally build PVC wood tracks and welded steel tubes, uh, rectangular tube welded steel um, roller coaster carts. But I've recently uh, added a fastened steel cart and a fastened aluminum cart. And so there's the whole engineering side of it where we build this roller coaster and then we test it and uh, we uh, we see the engineering process for certification and safety issues. <coughs> then we do testing. Uh, we will talk about how we instrument things, uh, come up with a test plan and uh, compare that to our analysis and see if we're happy that uh, we can let people ride it. And so then we talk about a safe operation. Uh, terminology. Uh, velocity is a change in distance over time. V equals D divided by T, distance divided by time. Acceleration is uh, velocity divided by time. That's how much the well, acceleration is how much the velocity is changing over time. Then we talk about energy. Potential energy is generally if it's just a weight in and in a gravitational field, then we talk about the mass times the gravitational constant, which is always the same on the surface of a of the planet of Earth, and then the height. And so it's pretty simple. Uh, potential energy is energy that's at rest. Uh, and if the if your cart and you are up in a high place, then we can calculate your potential energy. Kinetic energy is energy in motion, motion, and then generally in a, for what we're talking about, kinetic energy equals one half mass times volume squared times velocity squared. <clears throat> so, 
Um, and we know we, we're going to talk about uh, conservation of energy. Energy is not created or destroyed. It's just energy is converted from one type to another. So uh, when the cart is high in the air, uh, you have potential energy. When it's going really fast in a dip, then we then it's kinetic, mostly kinetic energy. And we trade those two off as we go up and down the, over the hills and down in the dips. We tr we're really trading kinetic energy for potential energy. And then there's, there's friction drag and aerodynamic drag, which is taking a little bit of energy away and converting it to heat, actually. It's not destroyed, like I said. Um, and then we need some convention here, roll, pitch, and yaw. Uh, and I think I have a picture to look at that. So when, we, when we're rolling is when the, uh, it's, it's the same as an airplane. When it's uh, spinning on the x-axis, then we call that roll. When it's pitching, you're, go, you're pitching, you're looking down and up if you're the pilot, then uh, we call that pitch. And yaw is when you're kind of spinning on a vertical axis. And so it's a lot like, uh, and we have a right-hand rule. I think I got one of these wrong. but um, So anyway, when we talk about roll, pitch, and yaw, this is what we're talking about. Units of measurement, very important. We're going to typically stay with uh, mass in kilograms, length in meters, time in seconds. Um, we can do, you know, we can kind of see what things are in miles per hour for the people in uh, in America who who are still stuck with the English system of units. But um, typically, because we're going to be doing calculations where it just makes more sense to, to stay in a metric system. Uh, we may talk about the metric system versus the uh, English or American imperial units uh, as we go along. Um, so velocity in meters per seconds, meters divided by seconds. Acceleration is meters per second per second, meters per second squared. It's just uh, that's the rate in which the velocity is changing. Force equals mass times acceleration. Okay, F equals MA. Newton came up with this and uh, a force it's called a Newton and it's a kilogram meter per second squared that's the units of it and uh, if we go further than that energy and work is joules is a uh, force times length and that comes out Newton meters or a kilogram meters squared per second squared and units are nice because you can check your work with it and I'll show you how to do that so the history of roller coasters, uh, this is in France uh, in 1817. Somebody was doing this kind of thing. Uh, and then there's the they started building wooden ramps for automobiles to go up and down. And people like the uh, accelerations they, they feel in the dips and going over the curves. And, and then uh, <clears throat> I think in the coal and mining industries, they had... Uh, tracks going up hills and they found out it was kind of fun to ride down them. This is an early patent for a roller coaster uh, that just goes out and back. A shuttle coaster I think they call it. And so there's just goes zipping along and, and it really wasn't attached to the track. It could fly off. and So it's usually just a fast uh, railroad kind of thing. But it did have a brake. Uh, so they're talking they're talking about a little bit of safety stuff. I think a guy would ride along and if he thought it was going too fast, he'd make it break or something. So here's uh, some early roller coasters. They can, you know, come off the track and they were some at times really dangerous. Uh, then we uh, come to the point where uh, somebody in 1912 invented an upstop. And so the roller coaster, and this is a lot of, this is the basic designed for most wooden roller coasters now is that there's a main wheel that rolls along and then there's side wheels that uh, guide the roller coaster and then there's upstop wheels that make sure the roller coaster can't come off of the track. So this was much safer and you can strap the people in and you can do higher accelerations and there's been a long history of uh, roller coasters and roller coaster accidents and and uh, this is just kind of an overview. This is uh, the 1960 Matterhorn patent. This is uh, uh, 
you can kind of recognize that they wanted this to go through this uh, mountain. And then this is the 1960 Matterhorn patent. It's the first use of, of tubular rails uh, where the, uh, there were uh, main wheels, side wheels, and they articulate. So you can kind of do, it's a smoother ride than, a, than a, what was previous. Uh, uh, and they had main wheels, side stop wheels, and they had upstop bars. It look, looks like not upstop wheels. I'm sure they've updated that today at Disneyland to wheels. Uh, and then, of course, uh, fast forward all 100 years, and you get the uh, modern roller coasters, which go really fast and are really smooth, and uh, a lot of technology. And I mean, the the mathematics is uh, much more complicated to design them. And the machinery that makes these is very complicated and can can hold very tight tolerances on very large structures. And uh, so the first thing you do in any uh, engineering effort is uh, define your design requirements and objectives. A requirement is something you have to do, and an objective is something that would be nice to do. Okay, so a design requirement is we have to we have to carry this weight of a person. And uh, we don't want to go past uh, some number of G's. Um, and then, uh, so I'm saying maximum weight, 100, 100 kilograms, which is 212 pounds. Um, I don't want to go, I don't want to go, you know, uh, you can do anything you want here before you start. But uh, then later on, you know that your design requirements, you, you, you tried to meet them or you did meet them. Factor of safety is an interesting that that means everything that we can analyze is designed to one and a half times the maximum load it will ever see, and that helps an engineer sleep at night, you know, knowing that it isn't about to break. It's uh, it's got uh, some safety built into it. Now a lot of this is a factor of safety of 1.5 is used in aerospace a lot because of it. it sometimes you don't. You don't know exactly what your loads are going to be, or you're going to define a set of loads, and then you want some assurance that you've designed for more than that. Typically, in in a ground um, engineering project like a roller coaster, when you uh, have a factor of safety, like on the chain that lifts the roller coaster up the initial, you know, you don't want any chance of that breaking, and, and often they will design that to a factor of safety of seven or eight seven or eight times what it would break at. And the floors in your house, uh, nobody wants those to break. And there's a lot of uh, uncertainty about the quality of the wood and, and the builders, how many fasteners, how many nails they put in it and all this kind of stuff. So to compensate for all of those unknowns, typically a house is built to a very high factor of safety, uh, like eight. It can, it can hold eight times what anybody thinks there any kind of weight they're going to put on that floor and it also could be designed for stiffness you know, nobody wants a spongy floor and so you could be designing not for strength but for stiffness and you got to decide what your budget is and and what the theme is and you can design a bunch of things and then in our in this course we're just going to do a two-dimensional track which is just out and back so we don't have to build a complicated track or a complicated uh, cart which I've done before and you can look look that up on my YouTube channel. But basically, we're going to go up a hill, down a hill, over a hump that gives us some weightlessness, possibly, and then down. And maybe we you know, might even could do a couple of bumps like that. But it's just going to go down and stop, and then you're going to carry the cart back up and and uh, haul it up to the top of the hill and get on and go again. And so it's 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 just a two-dimensional problem, and that makes things a little uh, easier. So I think that's, I'll stop there on the first one and uh, then pick it up uh, in part two.